And this is practical number nine, uh, principles of animal nutrition. In this practical and in the coming practical, we will uh, perform feed analysis. So what is feed analysis and why it is required? Uh, because when we uh, want to do feed formulation, uh, we need few things. Uh, the one is uh, we should know about the nutrient requirement of the animal and their available farm feeding standards. And the second thing, uh, we need uh, the type of feed stuff which are available for feed formulation. So when we have a list of feed stuffs which are available feed formulation, then we must know about the chemical composition of the feed stuff. Otherwise, we cannot calculate the quantity of different feed stuffs for feed formulation. That's why a feed analysis is required. The second analysis is required okay, when we have a complete diet or when we purchase some diets from the market. Uh, if uh, we do not uh, go for its analysis, we will not be able to check whether that diet is meeting the animal requirement or not. In both cases, for feed formulation or to checking the quality of the available mixed diets, we need feed analysis. So from that analysis, we can check whether we are feeding according to the requirement of the animal. So in that uh, case, we can avoid nutrient deficiencies as well as nutrient excesses. So this is what, uh, when we talk about the commercial diet or when we talk about the diet formulations, so to meet the nutrient requirement of the animal, we must know about the chemical composition of the feed stuff. So that's why we uh, do feed analysis uh, to calculate the amount of different feed stuff that should be mixed together to have a complete diet. Uh, feed analysis also tell us about the characteristics of variance, uh, various type of nutrients in a feed stuff. Like if we do analysis of corn, uh, we come across the uh, characteristics of the corn, whether it's an energy source or how much is the amount of energy, protein, or other nutrients are in that feed stuff. The best way and uh, the easiest way to determine the chemical composition of a feed stuff that is a proximate analysis. So uh, this is a very old technique and the first record of any systematic approach to measure the nutritive value that was traced back in 1800s. So this technique was devised uh, in mid 19th century at Winde Experiment Station in Germany uh, by the scientists Hanberg and uh, Stockman. So they uh, devised uh, this approximate analysis scheme. Though this is a very old scheme, uh, but still uh, this is applicable and it is also known as wet chemistry analysis. Uh, nowadays, uh, are very modern techniques, they are available. Uh, we can analyze a sample within a very short time. Uh, but keep in mind, without this wet chemistry analysis, we cannot calibrate our modern day equipment. Like there is an equipment that is known as near infrared reflectance spectroscopy. Uh, for calibration of that, thousands of samples are analyzed by using this proximate or wet chemistry analysis. Then we put that data in that uh, instrument. And uh, when we put sample, so from the available data, which we got from this proximate analysis or wet chemistry analysis, that uh, uh, instrument uh, predict the nutritive uh, value, or you can say it can determine the nutritive value or the nutrient of that feed stuff. So that can be done within a very uh, few uh, seconds, uh, but uh, proximate analysis uh, it will take a lot of time, uh, but uh, the values which we get, they are very accurate as compared to the modern day equipment if they are not properly calibrated. So this is the importance of this technique. Uh, yeah, all the new instruments, they rely on wet chemistry analysis because uh, we get accurate result only by using these techniques. So for the analysis of chemical composition or nutrient composition, uh, we have proximate analysis that we will perform. Uh, proximate analysis uh, is defined as partitioning of compound in a feed into six category based on their chemical properties of the compound. So it means uh, this proximate analysis basically uh, it partition the feed stuff 
into six categories or in other way we can say that through proximate analysis we can measure dry matter content of a feed stuff we can determine not measure rather we can determine dry matter then ether extract or fat content that's a crude fat then crude protein uh, crude fiber ash so these five they are determined by this proximate analysis the last one nitrogen free extract so it can be calculated by having uh, the first five values so in this way uh, we can get uh, six uh, measures uh, from this proximate analysis here are the few advantages of proximate analysis it is a uh, quicker turnaround uh, it's a relatively inexpensive uh, because uh, there is a little instrumentation cost as compared to the uh, other or latest equipment uh, but they have their own advantages over this proximate analysis and uh, uh, it gives an indication of any uh, problems in the field like uh, which fraction here is uh, not fraction rather which fraction have some issue like if there is a low fiber value or low uh, fat value then we can uh, get some idea uh, this proximate analysis uh, uh, it tell us about crude values and those crude values they are on quantitative basis like if we have a value of protein so that protein value is a crude protein similarly for fat it's not a true fat it's a crude fat so that uh, why we say it's a crude uh, when we perform these experiments uh, i will let you know uh, in a, uh, just uh, here to mention a uh, crude uh, mean ke the values which we get or which we obtain through this proximate analysis they are not uh, actually for that component there is uh, part of some other components that uh, usually determine when we determine like uh, ether extract or we determine the uh, protein contents so that's why we say these are the crude values and we get the quantitative values and we do not this is the negative point that we do not get a qualitative uh, idea uh, though we can assess the quality of the feed stuff on the basis of their quantitative value but in terms of animal likeness in terms of diet palatability in terms of its digestibility uh, we do not get any idea from the proxy meta analysis of the feed stuff how much but not how good so this is uh, what we can conclude from this proxy meta can we get how much is the amount of protein in feed stuff but we cannot uh, get an idea how much good that protein is for the animal from feeding point of view so that can be done by different ways uh, when we have this chemical composition of the feed stuff so this is the flow chart uh, this uh, material has been taken from this pond and church book basic animal nutrition and feeding so if you look at the flow chart first of all uh, we should go for uh, determining the dry matter content of a feed stuff or we uh, you can say that get a moisture free sample uh, before uh, going to this uh, flow chart uh, when we talk about feed stuff uh, that feed stuff contain moisture and the remaining material is the dry matter so within the dry matter there are two things one is known as organic matter and the other is inorganic matter so through this proximate analysis first uh, we do uh, or we uh, will go for drying the sample so after drying uh, we analyze the sample for its protein contents uh, for uh, fat contents then fiber contents and then ash uh, content of the stuff so all the stuff like this crude protein like fat and fiber these are the organic stuff present in a feed material and this ash is a inorganic material uh, that is present in a feed so for any uh, sort of feed analysis either it's a proximate analysis or either we are using some other type of instruments first of all we should go for proper sampling of the feed so we in now in previous lectures we have already discussed about how to take a sample and we define a good sample is one that truly represents the whole lot so after uh, taking the sample uh, we should go for sample preparation for different type of analysis like if we go for proximate analysis 
uh, we should go for drawing the sample. So here you keep in mind, if we would like to determine the moisture content of a feedstuff, then we should run a separate sample for moisture determination and rest of the sample for uh, getting a dry sample. After drying the sample, we should go for grinding the sample and uh, by using a uh, feed mill or grinder, we uh, need a sample that should have a particle size of 20 to 40 mesh size, that's a sieve size, or uh, technically it is a two to four millimeter sample, or the pore size of that sieve should be two to four millimeter sample. So 20 to 40 mesh mean two to four mm is the sample particle size. And uh, then after grinding, it should be thoroughly mixed and we should take a very representative sample